record it's unit five I think I don't know I don't know what to say unit five unit five seems Seems like such a long time ago that we uh, we were in Unit 1 thinking about bloody action potentials and ions and things like that. And uh, here we are now where we've been through, you know, we've been through so much together already, I think. And um, I feel like we can kind of breathe a, a small sigh of relief because I think the, the real conceptually difficult stuff is kind of behind us now. Well, maybe not, but anyway, I think this unit actually is going to be, it's a different a different gear, a different track, or a different track. Um, and I think personally, I think it is kind of my thing. So I'm a kind of, originally my kind of background is in molecular level stuff. So I'm, I'm in my element now, so I'm gonna, Sort of chill out a little bit i think for this for this unit just take it easy uh, take you along for the ride um i think mm, no so anyway uh where are we we've um we've, we've we've kind of got to the stage now where we we uh, we've developed this kind of very deep and modern state-of-the-art understanding of uh, world construction by the brain. You know, we 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 understand the the nature and the structure of the uh, the phenomenal world, your own personal subjective reality, and we understand um, how that relates to the environment. You know, and about information. All this is constructed from information, and how sensory information uh, is uh, is guides in a way uh, the. The, the, the updating of this this model um, and it and it feels like we're, we're almost at the point where we can start to bring psychedelic drugs into the picture right uh, and see uh, finally uh, try to explain what psychedelic drugs are doing um, to this world model because that's really what they are doing this is what psychedelic drugs do they change your world they change your personal reality they change your perception uh, but we're not quite there yet and this uh, unit unit 5 um, is going to focus on um, receptors now receptors um, we kind of met receptors a little bit. We met, we discussed the AMPA receptors, right? Remember back in unit one, where we discussed uh, these AMPA receptors that binds glutamate. It's a receptor, but it's also a an ion channel. Glutamate binds the receptor. Uh, glutamate binds to the receptor, which causes the channel to open and allows sodium to pass into the cell, thus depolarizing the cell and bringing it in bringing it closer to the threshold potential. Remember that term, yes, threshold potential. Um, so you kind of understand at least one receptor, right? And, may, and the GABA receptor as well, which we also discussed, the chloride channel. Um, but we need to go a little bit deeper now, because if, we're, we're to, um, because if we're to understand how psychedelic drugs affect your world model, uh, we need to think about uh, the, the receptor, because Yeah, what was that? Anyway, um, yes, because psychedelic drugs, they bind to receptors. You know, all drugs, well, not all drugs. Slow down, Andrew. Uh, but, but certainly psychedelic drugs and many, many, many types of drugs, they bind to specific uh, receptor sites uh, in the brain, which is where they have their, their action. Um, and so before we can, before we can kind of... Uh, discuss and explain how psychedelic drugs affect 
the structure of your reality, this, you know, this world model that we've been discussing for the last four units or so, uh, we need to think of, we need to somehow connect the world model um, to receptors because, as I said, psychedelic drugs work at the receptor. So what is a receptor? Okay, let's get to that. So you should know by now that a receptor is a, it's a protein and it's a particular type of protein. It's a protein that sits in the membrane and the purpose of a receptor, and I'm saying this slowly because it's very important, the purpose of a receptor is to transmit information from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. That's basically what receptors do. They are the cell's way of perceiving what's outside the cell. So for example, right, you might have an amoeba, one of these simple basic um, single-celled organisms. It might have on its surface, because it can't see, it doesn't have eyes, it might have on its surface glucose receptors, right, which will bind to glucose and that would trigger um, some kind of change, conformational change in the receptor, which is transmitted through the membrane uh, and triggers some kind of change inside the, the cell that signals to the amoeba, hey, there's some glucose here, or there's some glucose you know, in this direction, we should move in that direction, down up this glucose gradient, for example. Um, so, so a lot of people will, will a lot of people will kind of talk about receptors very, very knowingly, especially, especially in the kind of psychedelic arena. You know, people say, well, LSD, it binds to the 5-HT2A receptor, don't you know? That's the, that's the, the locus of its effects. That's why it has the effects in the vein. Um, but what they... <laughs> but what they will fail to do is really understand what, what binding to that receptor actually does. Um, and even many pharmacologists or neuroscientists uh, will have a very limited understanding of, of what actually happens, why, when um, LSD binds to this specific receptor, uh, which we look at in a lot of detail, uh, does it have these profound uh, effects on um, consciousness, these profound effects on your perception and the structure of your reality. Um, and so it's the the goal of this unit and also uh, some of the uh, the next unit uh, is to really um, give you a real deep uh, understanding, conceptual understanding of receptors in general. So how do receptors work in general? What do I mean when I say a receptor is a, a way for information to be transmitted from outside a cell to inside of the cell? Um, we will look at that in, in, in detail, you know, this conceptual understanding of receptors in general. Um, and then we will, uh, we will look at uh, one particular receptor, uh, or actually two particular receptors. Um, the one everyone's heard of, the 5-HT2A receptor, uh, and another receptor, which is also, some would say, as important um, um, as the 5-HT2A receptor. Okay, so first of all, let's, let's have a look um, before we get ahead of ourselves um, at a receptor. This is a, a model of a receptor, so let's just have a look at this. So here we can see um, a, a receptor. Um, now I will highlight, just so we're clear what we're looking at here. Um, so this is the membrane. Now, those of you that remember, the membrane is these kind of, kind of structure, right? There's these phospholipids, this fatty membrane. It looks like this, uh, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then we have the extracellular region or domain of the receptor, which I'm highlighting here, which is the extracellular, the external part. Then we have the transmembrane domain, 
trans, trans mem, dom, trans mem, fem, dom, um, losing, mm, distracted myself there with that nonsense. Um, yes, and then we have this intracellular domain, which is kind of, has a funny shape. Oh, there's something else there. What's this? What's this? What's this? We'll talk about him. Uh, and this is the uh, the intracellular domain. Intracellular, the, the internal domain, if you like. So, in other words, in brief, the receptor has a, a bit on the outside, um, which is exposed to the environment and exposed to... Um, molecules that are swimming around outside the cell. There could be a molecule. Let's draw one. What colour? I think violet. I've not used violet before. There we go. So we might have a... Is that violet? It looks more black. My eyes aren't very good. Okay, so this is a some kind of molecule that's binding to um, the external domain. So this is, you know, why we call it a receptor. A receptor is called a receptor because it receives something. It binds to something outside the cell. Um, and then somehow this causes some kind of change in the receptor, which we'll talk about next um, in the next video, um, and is somehow transmitted to the intracellular domain. Uh, and the intracellular domain then can trigger some change in, uh, in what, what goes on inside the cell very, very generally. And again, I will talk about this next time. Here, for example, we can see this little beastie, which seems to be attached to the in, uh, the the inner part, the intracellular domain of the receptor. So this is the kind of the anatomy, the general anatomy of receptors. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, there are certain classes, certain families of receptors. Don't worry too much about that, but generally think about what a receptor is. It's something that uh, it's a, a protein that transmits information from the outside to the inside of the cell, and it receives something. So it, 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 it triggers, uh, it lets the inside of the cell know that this thing that's received, let's give it its name, it's a ligand. I think we mentioned the term ligand um, in the first unit, right? A ligand here, there's the ligand. It's the thing that the molecule, could be a small molecule, it could in fact be a protein, uh, that binds to the receptor, the extracellular domain, and triggers... Um, some kind of change uh, that's, that's transmitted through to the inside. So the, the, in, the, in, the inside of the cell uh, is alerted to the fact that this ligand is there. Information has been transmitted from outside to inside. I think I have laboured that point enough. Okay, um, then briefly let's look at um, a, a channel. We've met a channel. We've met channels before. Again, this is a lovely... Uh, image from the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, so thank you very much. Um, fair use and all that. Um, so again, we've got the membrane. Um, and the channel, of course, is also a protein. But this time it has a hole that you can't see here that allows these yellow bad boys, maybe sodium ions, right? Maybe, maybe, to pass through. So in this case, it's actually a molecule that's passing through, right? So. A channel is something that allows some molecule to go through. Receptors generally um, don't allow things to pass through apart from information, right? Um, now, the, the AMP receptor is unusual in that it has a kind of receptor part which causes um, the, the channel to open. So this is a gated channel. We, we looked at uh, ligand-gated channels such as the AMP receptor. We also looked at voltage-gated channels, of course. But receptors generally that, that don't... Uh, that are not part of an ion channel. Uh, they don't transmit things, they don't allow things, molecules to pass through, they allow information to pass through. And in the next video, we will look at exactly how that works.